Hey all, this is Anjali and in this video, I'm going to explain you some important questions for your final board practical for computer science. Now, Viva is one of the things which you have to prepare for your final practical exam. Your final practical exam is divided uh, into different categories. The marks are divided into different things like your report file, your project file, your implementation of programs in the lab and the Viva. So Viva is one of the most important things because it is the one where you face the external examiner and the examiner get to know about your knowledge level and accordingly that affects your marks a bit. So the most important questions are out of obviously the most important topics which are related to OOPS because C++ is the major part of your syllabus. So one of the major thing in our syllabus is functions because the whole thing, the classes, objects and all revolve around functions. So when we talk about functions, the questions which can be asked are, what is the difference between actual arguments and formal arguments? And your answer should be like the arguments which we pass at the time of calling a function are called actual arguments and the variables which we receive when we define the function are called formal arguments. For example, if I call swap A comma B, so when I'm calling swap A comma B, that A and B are my actual arguments. But when I'm writing the definition of function swap and I write like void swap int x comma int y, so that x and y are the formal arguments, the ones which you write at the time of function definition. Then it can be asked like what is function prototype? Now function prototype is usually the top line of your function definition where we tell the return type, which type of value the function will return, name of the function and the list and number of arguments which you receive to the function. So function prototype can be defined as a collection of return type, name of the function and number and type of arguments passed to the function. Then a very important question is, what is the difference between call by value and call by reference? So it's an important question for Viva in your 12th and it is going to remain an important question when you're going to give your Viva for your BTEC practicals. So it's very important. So call by value and call by reference is dependent on your actual and formal arguments only. So we say that when values of formal arguments are modified and the changes are not reflected back in actual arguments, that's called call by value. And when changes made to formal arguments are reflected back in the actual arguments, that's called call by reference. Another major difference is in call by value. The values of actual arguments are copied to the formal arguments, whereas in case of call by reference, we only create references with the help of ampersand sign, that is to create another name to the existing variables. So no new memory is allocated and whatever change we make, that's reflected back. So that's the main difference between call by value and call by reference. Then we have what are local and global variables. The variables which are defined within a function are local to that function. They can be accessed, they can be used within the function only. And global variables are which can be assessed anywhere in the program and they are declared outside all the functions, usually above main. They can be assessed in any of the functions in the program. So that's the difference between local and global variable. Another important topic is classes and objects. And the very first question we can get on the basis of this is the difference between a class and an object. An object can be defined as a runtime entity which has certain features and operations to be performed on those features. For example, if I have a pen, the features would be the color of ink, the type of ink, whether it's ball pen, gel pen and all, and the operations could be write with the pen, refill the pen, discard the pen, so that's an object. But pen in general is a class. So any runtime entity having certain features and operations is called an object. And general description for a similar type of objects is called a class. So that's the difference between class and an object. Then comes what is encapsulation. A proper definition would be wrapping up of data and functions to work upon that data in a single unit called class is encapsulation. So when you write a class, you group the data members. For example, I'm making a class rectangle and I group like length and breadth as a data member and the operations to be performed are like area, parameter and all. 
So the whole procedure of creating the class is called encapsulation. Then you might be asked to differentiate between function overriding and overloading. Now function overloading is when I make more than one function in the same program with same name, but they are distinguished by the number of arguments passed to the function. So either number or type of arguments should be different to treat this as a separate function that's called overloading. And function overriding is specifically used in inheritance where we have one function in the base class and one in the derived class. Here the name of the functions are same as well as the number and type of arguments are also same but the difference is that one is in the base class and one is in the derived class. Then what is polymorphism? Polymorphism means many forms. When a single thing can be used in many forms, it's called polymorphism. Example is the star sign. We use it for multiplication as well as the same symbol is used for your pointer notation. So same symbol used for different purposes is polymorphism. Function overloading is also an example of polymorphism. Now a very important question is, Differentiate between private, protected and public access specifier. Now access specifier, visibility mode, scope of elements in the class, it all means the same thing. So private by the name says is private to something, means can be used by that only. So the members which are defined as private within a class can be accessed by member functions of that class only. They can't be accessed anywhere out of the class. Protected members are assessed within the class and their derived classes but can't be used anywhere else. Then comes public. Now public members can be used within the class, in the derived classes or in main with the help of object of the class. So they can be assessed anywhere since they are public. So that's the main difference and by default if I don't specify any access specifier while creating a class it's taken as private. So default visibility mode is private in the classes. Now we have some special functions in the classes called constructors and destructors. So it can be asked like what are constructors? So these are special functions used to initialize the objects of a class. They are called automatically whenever object of the class is created. So that's the definition. The name of the function must be same as name of the class. Constructor cannot return anything. There is no return type mentioned for the constructor. Then what is the use of copy constructor? So it's a special type of constructor. We have three types of constructors, default, parameterized, and copy. So copy constructors are the ones which are used to initialize object of a class with the values of another object of the same class. So it basically copies an object into another object. Then what is constructor overloading? If I have more than one constructors in the same class of different types, so it becomes like functions with the same name and different arguments. So like function overloading, this can be termed as constructor overloading. Now, another important thing which is asked in theory exams as well, that is when your constructor is invoked and when your destructor is invoked. So constructor is invoked when the object of the class is created, whereas a destructor is invoked when the scope of the object is over. That means when we are not using the object anymore in the program and the program is over. So destructor is called for the objects. Then comes inheritance, another important feature of object-oriented programming. So what is inheritance? It is basically a feature of creating a new class using features of an existing class, that is inheritance. And the major reason behind inheritance is reusability of code, that you already have a class and if you are making a similar class, you don't have to write through the very beginning. You can just add a few features to an existing class and get a new class altogether. That's inheritance. Now, how many types of inheritances there? There are five types of inheritances. The first one is single inheritance. Once there is a base class and there is only one derived class, like rectangle inherited to cuboid. Then I have multi-level inheritance. When I have class A inherited to B and B inherited to C and B would be called intermediate base class over here. Then we have multiple inheritance when more than one classes are inherited to a single class. That's called multiple inheritance. Then is hierarchical inheritance when one class in is inherited to two or more subclasses. 
And if we combine all these type of inheritances in some form, that's called hybrid inheritance. So five types of inheritances are single, multiple, multilevel, hierarchical, and hybrid. Now it can be asked this way also that if a class A is inherited to class B and class C, which type of inheritance is this? So we have one base class, two derived classes, so it is hierarchical inheritance. And another important thing is the scope of inheritance. When you inherit one class into another, we write the scope of inheritance as well. That means we have to write private, public or protected in front of the class name at the time of inheriting it into another class. Now, how does that matter? How does that matter is explained with the help of this table in a better way. So when we inherit a class, the scope of members of the base class can be any of the three. It can be private, protected, public. When you write the name of the class for inheritance, that can also have any of these three scopes. Now, this table is important for VIVA as well as this table is very important for the four mark question you get in the theory exam on inheritance. This tells you what all is accessible in the derived class, what all is not, and what all is accessible through main, and what all is not. So when I have private members in the base class, whichever type of inheritance you use, you cannot access them outside the class. So private member of a class cannot be assessed in the derived class, whatever type of inheritance scope I use. The remaining are protected in public. Now, if I write public scope for inheritance, they are inherited as it is, like protected members will be treated as protected only and public will be treated as public only. So protected could be used in further level of inheritances and public can be used through main with the name of the object. So we can use this one through main, it is accessible. But if you write protected at the time of inheritance, then nothing of the base class would be accessible in main because protected remains protected and public becomes protected. So they can be used in further levels of inheritance, but they cannot be assessed from function main. And if you want that it should not be assessed in further levels of inheritances as well, we take private inheritance scope. So protected members become private to the derived class. Public members also become private to the derived class. So they can be accessed in the derived class, but they cannot be assessed in further inheritance or in main. So this table explains you how the behavior of the members of the base class changes in the derived class depending upon which inheritance scope is used. So this is scope of inheritance. Now, in case of any doubt in whatever we have discussed till now, please write in the comment section so that I can get back to you on that the earliest. And I'll be uploading two more videos for the Viva questions. One would be covering Viva questions on file handling in SQL and the other would be covering Viva questions for arrays, matrices, pointers and data structures. So stay tuned. If you found this video useful, do like the video, share with your friends. And in case you haven't subscribed the channel, do subscribe it. Thank you.